Well, good day, everybody. How's it going? I'm coming at you from the studio today, and I've got an awesome, awesome video about the settings that I use for the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. Had the opportunity today to shoot a small little uh, real estate project on my friend's Phantom 4 Pro. I just sold my Mavic, so I didn't have the Mavic with me, but I was able to take his, and I'm just gonna grab it and get it set up, and we can get straight into this video. Here she is, little beast. I actually love this drone, uh, probably my favorite drone. Um, I've flown like the Mavic 2 or Mavic 3, and um, that's the only one, but today I got to fly this all on my own, which was awesome. So let me just quickly set up the controller and we'll get into the settings. All right, so here we can see the camera, we've got a low battery warning here. We're on 27% uh, battery, but basically um, we're gonna go sort of through some settings here. So we'll open up the camera settings uh, by jumping across to the video here and jumping into the settings. Now, this footage I'm gonna show you right now is what I shot today. Just a few little snippets of a house that I shot up in Brisbane. And basically it was a bit of a cloudy day and it had some overcast and it was a little bit dark and everything. So uh, I chose settings that I felt were appropriate for those conditions. So there is some form of thought that you have to go through setting up the drone and making sure that the settings you're choosing are gonna be worth like working for the certain situation. So I chose to use a filter uh, I used an MD8 filter, uh, which I think is now on the drone. I'll just check that. Yeah, so it's an MD8 filter that's on the drone. And I'll show you what sort of filters my friend has got. And I'll just focus that for you. It's in focus there. So these are the filters that I used. So when I actually got the drone and opened it up and got it out of the box, it had a ND4 filter and I felt like that might have worked for me. That might have worked, you know, um, not too bad for the type of day it was, overcast day. But I wanted to get up a little a bit higher and maybe there would be more light around the horizon. So I chose the ND8 to use. So I switched out to the ND8 and then fired up the drone and jumped into the settings. So basically here, my ISO, uh, straight away it was on auto and I put it straight to manual, almost immediately, uh, straight to manual. Uh, ISO right down the bottom at 100. I don't want to introduce any noise. There's no reason whatsoever to shoot anything over 100 on a day that was, there was plenty of light. I didn't need to boost ISO whatsoever. So the uh, aperture, I kind of wanted to get the surrounding areas, not just the house in focus. So my autofocus was on the house itself, but I wanted to get everything in great focus. So for that, I chose uh, the 5.6. Uh, and then I was shooting in 60 frames per second. So I chose a shutter of one over 120. Now this, back to the cinematic idea, is basically double the frame rate. And that gives you, what's called a 180 degree frame rate in the film industry. That gives you really good um, overall look and smooth motion to the footage. So I was shooting in 60p because I wanted the option to be able to slow it down later in a 25p timeline. So I, I chose to shoot it in 120 frames per second at 60p. So you could probably shoot in 60 at 60, but I wanted to get that nice motion blur, knowing that there's quite a number of frames packed into one, uh, one second. So that's what I chose for that. Uh, this exposure compensation uh, of minus two, uh, I'm not sure. I think that was set, that's probably set for currently how, where we are in the scene currently and what it's looking at, which is just looking at my desk here currently. So. That was the settings I had for the this uh, first setting here. Across in the next setting, I shot in 2.7K. 
Uh, so the video size, I didn't need 4K. I'm gonna be exporting this down to a 1920p timeline, but I did want a little bit extra wiggle room to stabilize the footage in post. And what I noticed with the drone is, and perhaps I didn't know exactly the settings when I opened up the drone, but it was a little bit twitchy. It seemed to be a lot more twitchy than my Mavic Pro. So what I did to compensate for that is I just made sure that I shot in uh, 2.7 at 60 frames, so then if I need to warp stabilize, then it get rid of some of that twitchiness, then I can do that in post later. So if I had more time with the drone, I would have set it so that it was less sensitive on the controls. So you'll see some of my footage, it is a little bit twitchy, the raw footage, but it's just because I wasn't used to the drone and the way it was set up. So I was happy to shoot in 2.7K and then crop a little bit in if I need to, or I can then stabilize in post. So that's why I went for that there. Um, the uh, next one uh, so video format was MOV NTSC because I wanted to shoot in 60 you'd be pal if you wanted to shoot in 50 frames per second I used the auto white balance because the light wasn't changing much and I knew it would do an okay job style I went for none so standard so no sharpness or contrast or anything on the footage and I usually shoot flat like that and I'm happy with that. I went on the D cine like. Now, the reason for that is because my brother-in-law who I did the video, which I'll link above now, uh, it was uh, driving to Cape Town, I think the vlog is called. Anyway, I'll link it above. It was a 4K super vlog. So a long vlog where we did a lot of drone work and stuff like that. Have a look, my brother-in-law, Marku Visuals. So amazing, amazing to be with him that day and shoot all that crazy good footage and a crazy good vlog. But he used D-Cine Like Pro and a D-Cine Like and I really liked that. So I went for D-Cine Like and I've been happy with that uh, general in general. So the other one is the camera video codec was H.264. So I haven't had any um, any work on the H.265, I've never used that. So I just stuck with H.264 for that. The last setting was I wanted the histogram on, a couple of things here weren't on, so I really wanted to know what the the actual uh, light I was getting looked like. So with those settings and the overcast day, I managed to get a great overall picture and the histogram showed me that there was really no clipping of the highlights. This is a histogram you can see over here. And it was really well spaced out and like really nicely placed in the middle, no matter where I flew the drone up or down. So that's what you wanna see. You wanna see a really even spread on your histogram. Um, you wanna make sure that you've got these settings where you've got, um, if you're shooting in, let me go back a step here. If you're shooting in 24 frames a second, you wanna select a shutter of 50 and you wanna lock in your shutter at 50. If you're shooting 60 frames a second, you wanna lock in your shutter at 120. So the 180 degree rule comes into play. It's really important with that. So they were my base settings for the shoot. Again, 100 ISO, uh, shutter one over 120. F stop of 5.6 because I wanted to get uh, not just a short focal depth, the Mavic uh, sorry, the Phantom it goes down as low as f2.8, but I wanted to give it a little bit more depth so I could see a little bit more of the uh, the scene myself. The EV, I think, I'm not sure if that's doing auto or not. Uh, and then some of the settings through here, um, basically I wanted it to, I had a lot of trees for this shoot. So one of the main considerations was I wanted the, the um, home, the return to home to be more than 20 meters. So I put it up to 30 meters and I launched it and I made sure my home point was set where there was no trees above. So taking off and landing was really important to be, to make sure that the home point was set for that takeoff and landing position. Now, what you need to do with that is, something really important with that is that you wanna make sure you fly 10 meters up on your first takeoff, because then it actually sets the home point very accurately, and it will then fly back. It will fly to that altitude and it will fly back and it will land within like 
you know, half a meter within like 250 uh, millimeters, it'll land really, really close to where it took off. But if you just kind of go up three meters and then, and then fly forward and then kind of maneuver the drone only, you know, two or three meters off the ground, that tends to not be very accurate when it comes return to home. And if you're around trees, it's really critical that it returns to home correctly and lands correctly, like straight up and down. Because if it doesn't, you'll hit a tree, you'll clip something, and it won't be, it'll be your fault because you didn't set the drone off correctly from the right point. So it says it, I think in here, maybe it tells you that you've got to go up to that um, altitude. Now the other one I did was I was in, I was right on the edge of a major airport uh, zone. So I run an app that tells me that it's 5.5 kilometers away and I was about 5.5 kilometers right on the edge of it. So the app was telling me that I wasn't able to fly there, but as soon as I fired up the DJI, it let me fly there and didn't have any warnings. So it means I was about five point, it was between five kilometers and 5.5 kilometers from an airport. So what was really important there is that I didn't fly too high because I didn't want to be in anyone's flight path. So I kept to the drone probably around 100 meters is all I went up but I kept it to 200, so if I did get a little bit excited or if I wanted to go a little bit higher to get that primo shot, that I wasn't gonna go over 200 and go into any flight paths or anything like that. So I kept really careful. Uh, I kept my eye on the drone the whole time and never let my eye off the drone. I made sure I knew where the drone was at all times. So that's a really cool feature and setting there. You know, if you're only doing a real estate photography gig or something that doesn't go very high, you you know, set that to 100, set that to 80, like there's no need to fly super high if you don't need to. And then max distance, um, I didn't have anything set for that. Uh, I just left all those, uh, but you can set, I think, a max distance uh, to fly away. Uh, you've got to en enable that. So I didn't have any of that set. I didn't need any of that set. Um, so that was all the settings I pretty much had didn't change any of these, but as I said, there was a little bit of a twitch in the controller and everything. So there would be a time when probably if I flew with this drone, particularly again, I would jump into these settings and I would look at look at this uh, a little bit in a little bit more depth to make sure that the, the settings weren't so twitchy uh, and weren't so um, yeah. I guess it was like really it had some micro moves and stuff like that that I wasn't didn't feel like I was introducing when I was flying it, but they were there, so I had to just work with that. Uh, as I was flying. So yeah, that's kind of the settings that I had for that. So this is for, like I said, um, something that I can use in a 25 frames per second timeline and I can slow down the footage like shot in 60p to get that slow motion feel. So I kind of shot everything a little bit quicker than real time. So I was sort of flying the drone quite fast. I wasn't doing I wasn't doing really slow moves. I was using the drone quite quickly with these settings. So what I'll do now is I'll show you how I would just set up the drone to shoot um, in yeah normal mode, like a normal shooting mode. So come across to here now, 100 ISO again. This is during the day, and I would probably shoot around, depending on what I was looking at, but around three to four aperture. So not as wide or not as um, big aperture so I don't need as much detail in the shot. So around about four. And then I would shoot at one over uh, 50. One over 60, it's gonna let me do in this mode. So what I'll do is I'll change my uh, shutter. So go into video size and I'll go to 24 frames per second. And I would probably shoot, if I was gonna be using the footage um, and we're wanting to get that crisp quality, great quality, I'd probably shoot in the 4K at 24 frames per second, something like that. So um, 30, 30 frames per second can give you a little bit more smoothness, but I find that 24 on 24 at 50 frames per second, like I mentioned before, so coming back over to the settings here and setting this to 50 frames per second, a uh, 50 shutter, sorry, 50 shutter. So essentially the shutter then is gonna be double the frame rate. So 24 frames per second, and we're gonna shoot the shutter at 50. And that tends to give me a really nice shutter effect and a really nice feel to the footage. Some people like to shoot in 30 frames per second and then conform it to 24, but I find that 24 and 50 shutter works really well as well and looks really clean out of the DJI Phantom. So. 
and everything similar here. Uh, I might then choose, depending on the day, a different setting for this. If I knew that, say, I was going to be flying and I was going to be turning the drone and going from a cloudy sort of cl the clouds into the sun, then instead of letting this auto, I might then set it uh, on either cloudy or sunny, depending on what I wanted to be the subject of the shot. So if I was turning from clouds to sun and I wanted to feature the sun, like the shot I'm about to show you now, which actually I shot on the Mavic Pro, but just to show you what that looks like coming up over a mountain and then into a sun scene, then I would set it to sunny so that I know that the white balance is not gonna shift on me when I'm coming into that, you know, the hero of that shot, which is the sunset coming into the sensor. So you don't want the auto white balance to begin to shift on you and then shift all the colors because then you have to correct that later in post. So it's really then good to use sunny for that. Um, and then like I say, if it's cloudy, if there's a big lot of clouds and rain or something that I'm wanting to feature and I'm coming from a sunny area or like a grassy area and then panning up into a sunny area, then I would want to use cloudy and then set it for the cloud scene so that you're not getting shifts in the white balance. But today it was all good. I shot an auto white balance and the footage looks great. So the style then I would also keep standard. I know there's other settings for this that some people have dialed in. And if I was to be with a drone for like a week or two or three and shot three or four times with it, then I would probably begin to dial in some settings that I was liking in post as well. But for that, I just set it flat and I was happy with that today. So uh, all the other things would be the same. Um, overexposed is probably good to use sometimes because that will show you where in the scene there's um, it'll give you the zebras to show you what's overexposed in the scene but I use the histogram over here so there's no issues with that I could have had that on or off and it wouldn't have mattered too much so there are my settings for 24 frames per second and getting a cinematic look out of your drone and knowing that that's shooting in real time so that's the way that I would cover it and shoot it in real time then I would be more uh, think more about my moves I would probably like not fly the drone so fast knowing that I'm not going to be able to slow it down if I'm shooting in 24 frames per second well guys, thanks so much for watching. That's my settings that I use to capture the footage that you saw in the video on the DJI Phantom uh, 4 Pro. And you know what? After flying this today, after looking at the footage that I captured, one of the things that I thought was, I'm probably gonna wait until the Phantom 5 comes out uh, and then I'm gonna buy one of these. I'm gonna get a secondhand Phantom 4 because it's a rock solid drone. The footage looks incredible and I know what I'm getting. I know what I can get out of it. I had the Mavic uh, Pro, I love that drone. The Mavic 2 Pro looks awesome as well. But the travel aspect of it is great. But when I go to a shoot, I'm taking gear anyway. And you know, a bag like this, an extra bag like this, when you know, you're going to a commercial shoot, is not that bad. It's not like the worst thing ever. Um, I just like the image quality out of the Phantom sensor and you know, they're gonna come on the market much, much cheaper already. I'm see seeing these for like 1300, 1200, 1300, 1400 Aussie dollars. So represents great value right now in the drone market. So thanks so much for watching this video, you guys. Subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. You won't be disappointed in the content that I'm gonna be producing. Uh, I've got a Patreon page as well. If you haven't checked that out already, I'll put the links down below to that. Basically, I'm just doing deep dive content, content that I can't really share with you here about clients and the way that I do business. So make sure you check that out and give us a thumbs up. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.